Hey guys, it's Carol and thank you for stopping by my floss tube. I have been super busy over the last couple weeks and that super busy unfortunately did not be making videos, but it did mean a ton of cross stitching. So I have a bunch of whips to share with you. I have one finish and a couple new starts. I probably didn't need to do the starts, but it was a Sunday and I just really wanted to have a couple, well, one small, the other one is I think maybe a bigger project than I realized it was gonna be, but but this, we'll just get right to it. So my finish is the Prairie Schoolers of Prairie Garden. I did in fact get this done in October. Um, we'll ignore the fact it's not November, but here's where it was last time. There you go, that's all she wrote, it's complete. I finished this up a couple weeks ago. Um, it was actually, I think, three days after I did my last video. I really just buckled down and got it done. It was, the whole thing looks fantastic. This is a 32 count Belfast linen. I believe the color is supposed to be white. It's, say, and it's Artiste. It's, I got it at Hobby Lobby back in 2018. So I don't know if the fact it's not as white as some of my other white linen because it was always an off-white. I don't know. I threw away the packaging ages ago, so. No idea, or if it's just or like some of my other white linens that they just kind of age into mellow, I guess I should think of it as mellowing, into beautiful slight off-white. But anyway, this looks amazing. I am really looking forward to framing it. I have a couple of other finishes that I need to frame, so I probably should go ahead and just get some frames on order, and because uh, I do frame my own stuff. So um, order frames and hopefully get this into like a fully finished sometime soon. Since I completed a project, I decided it'd be a great idea to start a new one because why not? In this case, it's a kind of small one. So this is Heartstring Sampler's Be That My Vision. This is part of the Sunday Stitches collection. I picked this up earlier this year along with two others, but this is, I started with my favorite because Be That My Vision is truly one of my favorite hymns. And I have a couple of small pieces of fabric that I picked up, like they were in like the remnants bin. So, this is my start. Not very big. Yeah, I know. Um, right now I have by waking. It's, so obviously, doing a center start here. Um, thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence, thy light. My light. Yeah, I can't read very well. Um, so I'm just working in here. There is a conversion for DMC, so I just went ahead and decided to use the DMC. This is on 40 count r, &R Reproductions Star Hollows. Star Hollow Blend, I can't even remember the name of it. It's literally just Star Hollow. But anyway, so I thought this, and I have two other pieces of 40 count, not in the exact same color, but I just kind of figured so these three Sunday stitches patterns that I have can go together. And this one's meant for, literally for me to do as a Sunday stitch. Um, that's actually what a day started on a Sunday, which you see is the work I got done on it that afternoon. Then I put it aside, I haven't picked it back up. But I do think I have a plan for making sure that when I start projects, they don't just get abandoned at this very, they're like, oh, I started it, now I have it on the whip list. No, I have an actual plan that I will probably talk about in my next video, but in the meantime, this is just gonna be, like I said, Sunday. Um, I love it. It's easy so far, the script is really nice. If I have one finish, one in, one out, no, no, two in. So obviously, I s another new start. In this case, it is Teresa Wensler's Fall Carousel Horse, and this is the pattern picture. I got this from her website, so it, the printout is a little, I will say the pattern is a little less clear than I would have thought for it being a PDF. Um, not such a big deal, but there is a fair amount of fractional stitches, like tons of quarter stitches, and a couple of them I'm squinting just because they didn't come through as sharp as I might like. Whatever, it's, it's really pretty. So one finish means one new start, right? No, it means two because of course I do. I decided that I had been wanting to start this one for a while, like not a decent while, like a long while. So this is Teresa Wensler's Fall Carousel Horse. 
and I bought this last year. You can get fall, summer, and spring on her website. I ended up getting winter in the Best of Christmas collection. I tracked it down on eight books, but anyway, I was realizing that I love that. Of all the Teresa Winsler patterns out there, the carousel horses are my absolute favorite, and I have them, so, and I even have the fabric. I bought an entire yard of antique white um, Belfast linen, 32 count to do these on and then I just hadn't started it so I was at Joanne and they had a Halloween door buster with DMC it was 45 cents a skein and so I was like well you know what this is an excuse to get this up so I went ahead and got started and this is my start I've done just the saddle like not a lot here it is four colors thus far Three of them are blends. Three. Um, I know that Teresa Winsler patterns have a reputation for tons and tons of blends. This is the first one I've actually done. But, I mean, it's really pretty, but, oh, what a, I guess it's the, I've already had to pull and create, create floss drops that are like for seven colors. And it's seven or eight, I can't even remember. It's like a lot of colors, so. It just meant the getting started felt very slow, but it is, I don't know. Then I realized I'm like, I really love the effect with the um, more gradual shading thing you could get. And this saddle is gonna be really cool. It has a lot of backstitch that it'll get done later. I did, now this project has a ton of backstitch. So I am definitely gonna be doing that as I go along because if I leave it to the end, I'm just gonna cry. So do I need another new start? No. No, I don't, but I have 20 whips right now, so it seems like the right thing to do. Um, and also, I really want to work on this one in the season of fall. And then, because I already have the fabric, I want to go ahead and basically get all of them started and kind of work on them as a rotation until they get done. I don't know, I'll figure that out. So the first Mirabilia that I worked on over the last couple weeks is Winter Queen. I had not really given this one a lot of attention, but just decided I was feeling it, so here's where she was last time. And here's where she is today. She has a chin. I mean, doesn't have the rest of her head, but she has a chin, so I'll take it. Uh, I've been working on, so I did finally get the dark blue that was needed for these little pieces, and I am just oh so carefully trying to fill in. This area has a ton of beads. So like all of this missing area is beads. There's some whispers, so I'm trying to fill in her shoulders and then I'm gonna go up, finish her head. Um, I'm not gonna leave her as a headless queen. That just seems uncool, but she looks like a little bit. I mean, she has an arm over here now, so I would like to spend more time on her, but um, all my projects are like that. I'd love to have 40 hours a day and then I could spend 38 of them cross-stitching. It's not realistic, not gonna happen, so this one will come back when it comes back, but I was really pleased with what I was able to do. The other part is I did start filling in with some of the Whisper. I was worried that it was gonna be a little yellow against the white, but it is just the perfect shade. And it's just because it's a little yellow when you look at it in Autumn Queen. Speaking of Autumn Queen, that was my focus mirabilia for this time frame. It's actually, I say this like, it's my focus mirabilia right now. It's gonna be my focus mirabilia, honestly, until it gets done because I have too many fancy ladies running around. Yeah, so that and also she's still headless. I mean, I don't know. It'd be nice for her to look like a figure. Anyways, here's where she was last time. And here she is today. I have her skirt miles and miles of skirt. I had said back when I started this project, the whole reason that I had chosen to finish like do the bottom is I don't, oftentimes the skirt is where I get bogged down in a project when I'm doing these mirabilias, just cause there's usually, it's, they tend to be bottom heavy. There's more stitches in the bottom half than the top half usually. So I decided uh, I'll try doing the bottom first and see how I like it. Well, the problem is that she's disembodied. Um, thing that if I could get back and do it again, yeah, I probably should have at least given her a head, but it didn't, whatever. But skirt, skirt is done. There is no more stitches that goes in the skirt proper. I mean, I'm still missing a bunch of this whisper here for her cloak. 
and obviously the beating, but your skirt is done. I, this ribbon has been completed minus its beads. Sensation has a sleeve and we're working in the bodice. I am just adoring how this is looking. Like it is such a pretty piece. I am, this actually makes me feel bad that it is out of print. Like I, I wish Mirabilis didn't go out of print. But I mean, I understand from the standpoint of the publishers that there's so many of these that you have to take some of them out of, but it's just so pretty, so, so pretty. And I don't know, the only thing, okay, so the, I just don't love stitching this whisper, like that's why this isn't done yet, but like I love this cloak. I, I really do feel that she, like she captures autumn in a way that's different than just, the changing in the leaves type. I think it's just that she has a very rich color palette and I don't know. It's just, it's really nice. I wasn't sure how I'd feel because the picture on the pattern, you know, first of all, the picture on the pattern is like some like developed at a regular, I don't know. I mean, it's on regular glossy photo paper from 2002 and it's always looked a little yellowed to me. So the brightness of the teals had never really quite registered with me, but I love it. I mean, I don't know that I would have, if I were left up to me, that teal and purple would not have said, yeah, you know, that's going to go together. Guys, it works. Like, who knew? It's, it's fantastic. So I hoping to really still, I think, capable of getting this one done before the end of the year. So wish me luck. And I will say that going forward, I'm planning on doing three to four days a week on her just to try to really get towards the finish. A more classic take on autumn colors is found here in Custom Crafts Autumn Chapel. I am working up here and it's clearly, it's the changing of the leaves. I mean, you see how bright red this is. Anyway, this is where it was last time. And here we are now. I know it's not the most, I think it's like when I zoom them in and put in where it was last time, you can really see what's going on because I can see like if I do the camera and do a close up, it's really like awesome. But just looking at it like this, it's, uh, how did I describe it to my husband? I was like, well, the blob got bigger. He's like, well, yeah, I do see it. I'm like, can you see what's going on? He's like, it's a blob. <laughs> and I mean, yes, I called it a blob first. So of course he's gonna just use the word, but it really like, there's golds happening. There's some reds, the deep green of trees that haven't started turning yet, but this is not, really obvious. Um, this is the only project that I am currently parking on. Well, I only have two full coverage right now anyway, but I don't, as a rule, generally like parking, but there's enough of the colors through here are easy to repeat that I'm finding parking is working. So what I'm doing is I'm doing literally like squares of a hundred from here, marching down, just going along with the chart. So what happens is if I find it here, like let's say I'm working in this square, and I have nowhere else to go with it. I go ahead and park it in the next one down and all the way. And then I'll start, I'll go back, fill in what didn't get done in these squares. So you can see like this one where it has just a little bit not done. I'll fill those and then I'll move the threads and do the next set. So it makes sense to me. It leaves, what I do have is I generally not, it's an insane amount of threads hanging off the project. And I feel like there's a decent amount of progress. Um, so I'm happy with it. Uh, it does, I mean, like I said, when I sit there, I feel like it stitches up pretty quickly. I just haven't put as much time into this one because it's been my neglected full coverage. I'm gonna say I've only been working on it for a little bit. I know, but it's still my neglected one because I've maybe done like 300 stitches on this. So I didn't spend as much time on Autumn Chapel because I have been really, really motivated to work on my Heaven and Earth Designs Winter Kiss. This is the pattern. And here it was last time. So I decided that I wanted to start page three on it and I am using Stitch and Mommy's typewriter method. And I have to say, I am incredibly happy with how much I've managed to get on. So the top row, 
the first row. There's a couple missing in the second row, but it's completely done on page three. I am um, just, oh, this piece of fabric is so big that it likes to just store it just kind of hanging in my lap. Anyway, so this is a, this particular page is not particularly interesting and it's a lot more kind of like right through here where you have the faint trees, but you know, that's, that's how it goes. I'm just, I, for whatever reason, had been really, really motivated to work on this. So I spent like all of yesterday. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of impressed considering I kind of just started it on a whim, like, oh, I think I wanna, you know, just cause it's not gonna stitch itself. And if I'd like to get down to the interesting parts of the chart, which are down here, I need to move my way across. So I, that was my thought process. And it's just been, like I said, the typewriter method has worked out really well so far. So I, if you haven't tried it, like give it a try because I'm impressed with how much stuff has really just been filling in by just starting up here and then run the thread until it goes out and then like start with the next one. So even though I have to have some holes in like row two here, I mean, you can see this is what I've done in a week and a half. I'm pretty happy with it because I am really, really slow on this project. It's not the most confetti heavy. There's only 40 colors in the end. I think it's four, no, 36 colors in this entire piece. And I'm not even using all 36, but there's enough color changes and worrying about counting. You'll see, I, like I have to use a grid. Um, like I don't like dealing with all these threads, but whatever, it's, I'm happy. Um, so I, think that I'm going to be trying to put more time into this just so that I can go somewhere with it. <laughs> the full coverages look really neat. I think when you, um, so you get along, when you're actually working on them, you, I think it is easy to get a little hung up one that you can see all the individual, we'll call them pixels in this case. I mean, they're not, they're X's, but not seeing the forest from the trees, like it looks way better, <laughs> like when I back up and I'm not very good at that. So, but, then it's like I'll step away and look at it and be like, oh, that's really cool. I didn't get as much work on samplers done over the last couple of weeks. This is the thing I originally wanted to, but that's okay. I did some. So this is Modern Folk Embroidery's The Fruit of Plenty. And here's where it was last time. And this is where I am today. I have started, I mean, I'm trying to fit it. So this is like the center motif center line is right here. Um, a lot, no, so this is actually technically still part of the January card, this little corner right here. So what I've been doing is just filling in and trying to basically all of my lighter color between these two little motifs. That's been my target of focus. It's still looking really awesome. I mean, I don't even know what there is to say for it. I do think I'm gonna start focusing on just this one and let some of my other samplers sit for a bit. Um, I think it's because this one is at the moment, it's only about 9% done. And I just, I don't know, I feel like I would really love it if it was all the way across and I was working down here. But right now progress feels really slow. It might just be mental, I don't know. Okay, so this one, it's Modern Folk Embroideries, the Family Patrick sampler. I did not put a huge amount on this one. Okay, and I actually did this so close to my last video, which means it's been a couple weeks, and I didn't write down what I worked on precisely. So I know it's different. Here's where it was last time. Here it is right now. I think it's so that it was working in here in doing this. Um, I'm still working on finishing up that first month. Um, I mean, here's the thing, but I do have it. I love, I just, I don't know. I've kind of like had a mental block on this one. And I think it's because it's similar enough to the Fruit of Plenty. And I'll be honest, I love the Fruit of Plenty a little bit more than this one. So may, I'm almost thinking about this could maybe go into hibernation for a little bit, just because right now I'm like tracking along at a roughly the same spot on both projects. It just, it makes it harder for me to see progress. I don't know. I mean, like I said, it looks great. I love it. And when I'm sitting there stitching on it, it's a lot of fun, but I just, again, I'm just not getting as far as I would like. And I think that is something that I really need to, I don't want to say it, I don't want to get stuck in plans mode. 
but I need to be a little more understanding that I need to see progress. And when I have patterns that are of a style close to each other, in this case, honestly, this one and Fruit of Plenty are pretty similar, they're the same size. Like I need to, I don't know, focus on one just to get it differentiated because right now for me mentally, the only difference is this is uses one color DMC, the other one uses two. And I don't think that's really fair to the project. And then lastly, yes, we're to the end of the whips. It's not even a whip parade, but this is Heartstring Samplery Coffee Quaker. Here's where it was last time. Here we are today. I finally have more words than just first day drink. The coffee. So we're already up to first I drink and I finished this motif here. So really once I do this, this entire part is done, but I am at about a third of the way done with this. Like when I counted it up, I was really kind of impressed. So, cause there's not much more to get to the bottom here. This particular piece of fabric has huge margins and I don't know why, but I am um, just, I love how this is going. It's, one of my smaller projects. It's not particularly small if you look at how dense it is, but anyway, I am happy that, like I said, I'm really working on, because page one is here, then there's like a small map page two, big page three, a little bit page four. So I'm now working down in page three. Um, it seems like what I'm doing is going down this side and going this way. It's funny how different projects call you to do different things. Like of an inclination, I prefer to get up to a right corner and work down just how I like to hold the needle, but this one, for whatever reason, it's really calling me to do all of this and then just kind of work collectively over right. I don't know, why do patterns do that? Because it's not how I started. It's not what I thought I'd be doing at all when I started this way back ages ago. Um, but I don't know, I don't have any insight on that. It's just something I kind of noticed for myself that I have different like each pattern, I guess I treat as its own unique, like when I'm sitting there or holding it and deciding what to do next. So yeah, this one's really cute. Um, and on that note though, so 10 whips, uh, and apparently like, I think three weeks between videos, a little long. Um, so for the next week, I'm going to be working on autumn queen. I'm going to pick up fruit of plenty again. Um, I don't know what my others are going to be. So I'm giving myself, I can pick in total for the course of the week five projects and I'm going to have to stop it at five because I noticed that otherwise I will flit and pick up like all of them and get almost nothing done. So Autumn Queen is going to be getting honestly three days a week I think from now until the end of the year and hopefully that will get me to a point of finish and then definitely one full coverage and one sampler in the course of a week. And let's say I do like one day on each of those, cool. I don't have like exactly an idea what I want to do the rest of the time, but it, this is where I'm noticing I need to do, like I said, more progress. I have a lot of these, a lot of my patterns, they're all beautiful. I've made, I'm not at the very beginning. I'm not like where I shoot with Fall Care as a horse where I have literally like, what, maybe a hundred stitches in it. Like I'm not at that point. I have a bunch of these that are have, like 500, 1,000, 1,500 stitches in them, but they're still almost at the beginning of the project and I would like to get them to that midway point. I have a lot of stuff that's really somewhere between 10 to 15%. I think that's this place where it almost, it's demotivating and I don't wanna be there. So I'm gonna be thinking about this, maybe writing out some ideas, try to like tinker with it. I'm. I'm not the world's best planner. Like, I'll be honest. I love seeing other people's plans. I love the active planning and then I can manage to create a plan that I won't follow. So that's why I'm like, I don't know that I wanna go down that, but I'm really starting to think about what do I wanna see? Like we're almost to 2023. So what do I wanna do that will make me really enjoy the time I spend with my cross stitch? And so that's, I haven't, like, I don't have that answer yet, um, but I'm gonna kind of think about it, let it almost like, let my thoughts coalesce into something that I can articulate readily in a video, hopefully sometime later this month. I don't wanna be like, 
I don't know. I, I feel like I want to have that thought out before the new year. And all of that is much closer than I thought. Like, I was just realizing, like, Thanksgiving, it's time to be for me to buy a turkey. Oof. So, like, the holidays are sooner than it feels. I know, right? By the way, I say this, and it's, like, in the upper 70s today. It's hot. I People in my neighborhood have their air conditioning running. I kind of wish I did. So the idea of thinking about New Year, and that's me, says cold. And right now, it's... Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you're having a great week in crafting. I'll see you next time. Bye.